the last three wings. If they fail, the project will be delayed by up to a year at a cost of millions of pounds. The inspectors fan out. Working round the clock, they look for fire and safety violations, electrical code compliance, structural integrity, mechanical problems, even aesthetic issues. They all go through it with a fine tooth comb. They'll look at every single item on the drawings. It's two days into Hell Week. The inspectors known as the design team present their initial findings. Sandy Singer chairs the meeting. I'm responsible for all decision making leading up to and granting conditional and final occupancy of government facilities in Antarctica. There's immediate bad news. The design team have already found 75 faults. Well, as of compiling this document, 75 total items on the list today broken out by these major subsystems. One takes the builders completely by surprise. To move supplies into one wing, the team had built a temporary snow ramp, just meant to last the winter. But the design team doesn't see this as sufficient. Their safety regulations require a stairwell at every fire exit. What you just told me indicates that a ramp is not an acceptable form of egress. Is that correct? It has to meet the same handrail requirements as a, as a stair. Fire alarm is not working properly either. There are serious issues with how the steel beams supporting the station have been installed. It didn't fit up quite perfectly enough for them to put the bolts in. It chose to weld instead. And a railing is not up to building standards regulations. I don't believe there's any power to this one. The unit heaters down here, do you know any reason why they'd be uh, turned off? Yeah, one of the issues I think is the energy. No, we'll add it to the list. Mark it up though, because I can mark it up on mine. Okay. Even electrical and mechanical systems are turning up huge problems. Lots of issues. Mm. And basically call to be glued on the wall. Yeah. So Hell week is taking its toll. I would say maybe not all. Gotta work on quality. No you question. just got to do it. And not only that, but the architectural finishes this time are, have dropped. So we haven't really seen a gain. Um... The team are working as hard as they can, but a lot needs to be repaired. Rechisel, we screw that in, put the lock right in. The faults would be considered minor on a major construction site anywhere else in the world. But this is the South Pole. And Sandy Singer won't open the station unless they're fixed. She knows that if an emergency arises here, rescue can be literally months away. Obviously, we're running out of time. We've got about three days left. Uh, Friday is the day that we want to get conditional occupancy. And we've got about, I'd say, 40 priority one items that are still outstanding. The inspection is even more stressful than the team feared. It's going to go right down to the last day. There are only 48 hours left of Hell Week, and an already tough inspection is about to get even worse. Let's uh, go around the table, have the design team uh, develop the priority one issues. Uh, I guess this is kind of the big one. The vapor barrier is exposed. It is required to be concealed. No exposed vapor barrier in concealed spaces. The vapor barrier forms a seal between the heated interior and the outdoors. A section in the roof space is exposed. It's flammable, and for safety reasons, it must be covered with a flame-resistant material. The builders set to work fixing the roof but it takes time the already overstretched team doesn't have. It's an intricate and exacting job. Tensions are beginning to rise. 
I'm not willing to move off the position that I've committed to previously with the design team, that I backed up their recommendation that it should, the original design intent should be, be upheld. I don't want to reject well, any, know, any, the big picture, and I don't any options. That. But huge those, issues. Yes, but if it's so difficult, then it needs to be rejected collectively. And then we can go back to, I feel, the external methods. He's come up with, I think, some pretty good ideas. But they're but I can't compromise. I mean, there's only so much. I, so far, I can compromise. This one's dicey. Mm -hmm. Infrared tests also show that heat is escaping from the roof. Sandy and the team head up there for further investigation. What they find is disturbing. The vapor barrier isn't just yeah, leaking. Off, Ice is building up under the plastic sheeting fitted just weeks yeah. before. Over the winter, this could cause panels to fail, putting lives at risk. A full repair would require replacing an entire length of roof. An enormous job, impossible to complete before winter. Well, I know that resources in the next few weeks are definitely already overcommitted, but we do have to find room somewhere in that. The teams reach a compromise. They agree the problem is serious, but not life-threatening. This is one repair that can wait until next season. But throughout the day, the design team find more and more life-threatening faults known as priority ones. With just 24 hours to go, the situation looks bleak. Okay, here we are. It's the night before. I'm still hearing a lot of new priority ones, and I'm not exactly sure how many of the previous priority ones are Bio still mark. out there. Ones are Bio still. Mark. I guess I'd like a count now. I get 52 from this list. With 52 priority yeah. one failures, for the construction to stand any chance of success. The team must work round the clock. Good luck. I sincerely mean that. So let's see where we're at tomorrow. For the first time in six years, the construction team looked like they'll fail Hell Week. The inspection team will leave the South Pole Station in just 24 hours. If they don't grant approval, the three new wings can't be used for a whole year. And approval can only be granted if all Priority One issues have been resolved. 24 hours to go, and looks to me like if you do your math or what I've heard today is we've got roughly 50 to 55 Priority One items. Some of them are fairly uh, labor intensive. Some are going to require materials on site that we're going to have to continue to uh, find and fabricate. The effort tonight is going to be is going to be a long one. We've been given a list of things to correct, and in the process of doing that, we found a few other things. So, uh, yeah, it's a pretty good couple of pages. You got to fix that ceiling. I finished the upstairs handrails, got the threshold done, and I'm in the back doing the uh, cove base. I just need the exterior corners. The opening of the station will depend on satisfying Sandy Singer and the design team. The construction team worked through all 52 Priority One items. They build a complete fire exit entirely from scratch to replace the snow ramp. Repair electrical lines, mechanical systems, and the fire alarm. They work all through the night. A final push at the end of three long years' hard work. It all comes down to the final meeting. It's time for Hell Week to come to an end, one way or another. Um, 
At this point, um, I guess I'd like to go around the table to uh, the members of uh, the design team. Um, all of my A single Priority One problems. failure will mean the three new wings can't be occupied, and the station will not be complete for another year. Cut to make it either shorter or longer. So the design team, uh, Tim, give us a status on your priority one items. Okay, um, all of my priority one items have been satisfied. There were. Well, it's truly amazing. I accept on behalf of the National Science Foundation and the Office of Polar Programs. It seems the last all nighter has paid off. So, conditional occupancy is hereby. Granted. Um, congratulations. The Amundsen Scott South Pole Station is now open for business. All right. So let's make it official. And now I can declare that Hell Week is over. Congratulations. <laughs> The team has pulled off an amazing feat of engineering and human endeavor. They've built a polar station that would be home and office for some 150 people. Most importantly, it'll allow scientists to focus on research that may change the very way we see our planet and the universe. For the team, it's an incredible achievement. And for project managers Jerry Marty and Carlton Walker, it's the culmination of nearly a decade's work. To be part of that team is something that, uh, for me personally, it's, it's, it's completing the loop on a chapter of my life that's been a, a dream and a goal forever and ever. The battery. Okay, get on you. <laughs> for the last eight years, um, we fought it every year to get to this point, and we did, so we're there. The Amundsen Scott South Pole Station completes a dream begun more than a century ago. The first explorers could never have imagined the scene here today. A landscape dominated by a building that has pushed engineering and technology to the absolute limit. It's a stunning achievement and a landmark that will help push the boundaries of science for decades to come. <laughs>